Hey there, it's John with Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to share five keyboard shortcuts for the F4 key in Excel. And before we get started, I also want to mention if you're using a laptop, you might need to hold down the FN or function key in combination with F4. Most laptops also have the ability to lock the function key so you don't have to press FN with F4. And I will also share the Mac equivalents for all of these different shortcuts and actions. So the first one we're going to look at is repeating the last action. On this sheet here, I have some data. Let's say I just select a cell and then uh, change the fill color to yellow. I can now go select any cell here and hit the F4 key on the keyboard, and that will repeat my last action, which was applying that fill color. So I can go down here, uh, select another cell, hit F4. I can select a range of cells and hit F4, and that will repeat that last action. And that really works for any type of formatting that you apply to cells or ranges, including borders, uh, number formats, really anything up here on the home tab of the ribbon, even inserting and deleting rows and columns. It also works for shapes. So on this sheet here, I have some charts. Let's say I want to change the fill color of these bars here. I can just select those, select the series. I'll just change it to this green fill and go over to this chart here, select the series, hit F4 on the keyboard. That'll repeat the last action. Hit F4 again here and repeat the last action. The keyboard shortcut on the Mac is Command Y, and you can also use Control Y on Windows. Next, we'll take a look at using F4 to create absolute or relative references when writing formulas. So I'm going to write a simple VLOOKUP formula here. We'll type equals VLOOKUP, tab into that, select the lookup value, we'll then type a comma, then select the table array here. And at this point, I wanna make this range an absolute reference. So down here in my formula, I'm going to hit the F4 key on the keyboard, and that'll put the dollar symbol here in front of the column letters and row numbers for this range to make it an absolute reference. Now you can also apply this to just a single cell or a single range reference here, cell reference. We can hit F4 here. This will make this an absolute reference. This is a toggle that cycles through all the relative and mixed referencing. So if I hit F4 again, that's just going to make the row reference absolute. Hit F4 again, that'll make the column reference absolute. And then hit F4 again, that'll remove this and make it a relative reference. So you can continue to hit F4 to toggle through that. I want to make the column reference absolute here. We'll quickly finish off our formula. We want to return column three, false for exact match. We'll hit enter. That gives us our result. And now we can copy this formula down. And when we copy it down, of course, this absolute reference here will always reference this range here and not move down as we copy the formulas down. If you'd like to learn more about how to write these VLOOKUP formulas and this absolute and relative referencing, I have another video that explains VLOOKUP in more detail. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. And the keyboard shortcut on the Mac is Command T, and that'll also toggle through the absolute and relative references. Next, we'll look at using F4 to find cells. So I'm first going to open the find window, hit Control F to do that. And let's say we want to find any cells that contain the value of coffee. So we'll just type that in here. Now, of course, at this point, we can hit the find next button and that will select the cell, the next cell where it finds the value of coffee. We can continue to hit find next here to find the next cell. But sometimes we might want to do this with the find window closed and just use a keyboard shortcut for this. So we can actually close the find window at this point here, and then we can use shift F4 to find the next cell. So I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard, press F4, and that will find the next cell. Again, you can repeat that shift F4 will continue to find the next cell and then control shift F4 will find the previous cell. So that'll take us back. And this is really nice because we don't have to jump back and forth between the find window. The keyboard shortcut on the Mac for this is Command G to find next and Command Shift G to find previous. Now I should point out that the, this uh, shortcut is going to perform whatever you've done in the find window. So if you're using some of the advanced options here, uh, this will still work. Uh, once you close the find window with your find what value here and these options change, uh, Shift F4 and Control Shift F4 is just going to perform the same action as pressing the find next button. Also works if you're finding uh, formatting cells with formatting and those advanced options as well. Next, we'll look at the F4 shortcuts for closing the current workbook and closing Excel. 
So the shortcut to close the current workbook is Control F4. I'll hold down the Control key and press F4 on the keyboard. That's going to prompt me if I want to save changes. At this point, if I do, I can just hit Enter on the keyboard to save changes. So I'll do that. And that will close the current workbook. Now you'll notice that Excel is still open in the background here. And so it closes the workbook, but doesn't it close Excel completely. And the shortcut on the Mac for this is Command W. Uh, you can also use Control W in Windows if that's easier to remember. Now, if you want to close down Excel completely at this point, you can use Alt F4. So hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, then press F4, and that will close Excel completely. The Mac equivalent is Command Q for quit. I do have a separate article that explains other shortcuts for closing workbooks and Excel, and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. So that's five shortcuts for the F4 key in Excel. I hope these will help save some time out of your day. Of course, if you have any other suggestions or questions about these shortcuts or tips on how you use them, please leave a comment right below this video. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.